Fresh Chicago has made a great difference through several ways. By opening our eyes to the bigger body of Christ. It's beautiful. I mean, it's brought uh, people from different denominations, different cultures. When we gather and pray, I know people have actually mentioned, hey, there, has, there hasn't been a shooting here since you guys prayed. Prayer makes a difference and God makes a difference. And we believe that the church, through its prayer, can be a powerful force against the violence. So there's a lot of our city that does not know yet about who Jesus is. But as we come together to crowd to God in prayer, we're believing that, that a watching city will notice that God's people, the church, are seeking to step into some of the gaps, the broken places in Chicago. That's our hope. What is my heart's cry for Chicago? My heart's cry for Chicago, I can hear Paul say, my, my desire for Israel is that they would be saved. My desire for my city is that people would know the power and the transformational love of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Praise Chicago! This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Roy Patterson. I'm your host for this evening. I'm standing here at Moody Bible Institute, and we have gathered by the hundreds to give Jesus Christ glory and to bombard heaven for Chicago. If you're here, make some noise. How many of you guys enjoy walking? Anybody? Any walkers here? Any runners here? Wow, really? Okay. But can you imagine walking from New York to Chicago? 780 miles. Wow. Well, tonight we've got a gentleman that loves Chicago and loves the Lord. He's a preacher. He's got a heart of compassion. It's all about love. That's his theme. It's a love thing. And he wanted to walk from New York to Chicago to let us know he loves this city and he believes that God can do anything. I'm here with Reverend Al. Where are you from? Harlem, New York City. And what in the world are you doing in Elkhart, Indiana? I'm on a prayer walk. It's called, it's a love thing, New York City to Chicago. And I'm here just to share the gospel of hope. And so how much total miles are you going to be walking? Um, 780 miles. And what do you hope will happen as a result of this prayer walk? I'm hoping people will be inspired, encouraged to do something different. Um, it's about hope. It's about hope, having hope. But that hope for peace will only be realized in recon reconciliation through Christ. So, see, Christ is always in it. How do we get to the next level? We have received grace. Let's give grace. Well, you know, I don't like how you looked at me. Well, I don't like what you said about me. I'm sure I've done a lot of things that people didn't appreciate. So I have to now give, give grace to somebody else that does it to me. That's the simplest way to start. How long is it going to take you to do 780 miles? <laughs> uh, I started August 7th, and I hope to be in Chicago on the 7th of September for uh, Praise Chicago Day. What has one, been one thing that's really impacted you so far on this prayer walk? I, I think the, the love that I've received from folks that really surprised me. Um, I have my preconceived notions in terms of how I might and what a different ethnic group may or may not do, especially for a stranger. And I've been moved to tears, literally, by the hospitality and support that I received from strangers. Strangers in Pennsylvania, um, parts of New Jersey, parts of Ohio, even here. I mean, if I were stranded, I think within 20 minutes of being stopped, being stranded, someone's always there to say, hey, can I help you? Even though we're not stranded, they think we are. I had one guy give me 70 bucks. He said, you're walking to Chicago? Well, you need some gas money for the lag vehicle, and I just want to support. And that was in Pennsylvania. We just came out of the 
most murderous month in 20 years in Chicago. In August, there was more homicides than any other month in Chicago in over 20 years. And um, a lot of people are wondering, this is just normal. It's maybe and when we say maybe it's poverty, maybe it's politics, maybe it's uh, uh, something about the people, but do you think a prayer walk could really change a place like Chicago? Absolutely, because here, here's the thing. We don't have the power within ourselves individually to say, well, this is what we're going to do, but trusting and believing God that his power will prevail. And it's going to require a lot of doing something different. You know, I think the seven last words of a dying church is, we've never done that before. Hmm. We have to step out and say, if, if we're talking about faith, if we're talking about it, and that's all we're doing about it, then you're going to end up with the same results. I think we got to take it to wherever. Is there one solution? Is there one answer to the problem? No. I think the problems that are happening in Chicago are, 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 are horrendous. There's too much inner city issues that are going on. But when we look at the gunfire and say, well, well what else? Why is this happening in Chicago, New York? Houston and other cities, um, in particularly communities of color, but then there's there's a disparity between housing, education, economics. So it's not just one thing, but in order to get to the solution, I think we have to have hope that tomorrow is going to be better. Don't give up now. So at this time, I want you to help me welcome a brother that's walked all this way. Pastor Al Taylor is in the house. He made it. Come on, let's show him some love. As he comes, there he is right there. Have a seat, everyone. Oh, Pastor Al, come on, step up here. Man, what made you want to make this kind of trek from New York to Chicago? Can I say thank you first? Sure. Thank you, Chicago. Um, wow, this is it's, it's, it's really a lot, and I am so honored. But it had nothing to do with me and everything about listening to God, which is something that I have not really been good at doing. Yes. And when I met you and we were talking in June, I had been training to walk, and I wanted to make sure that I could do it. And I kind of got to start feeling that, you know, you could do a lot. Yeah. And the more I thought I could do, the less I started to depend on God. Hmm. I don't know if y'all know anything about that. We know about it. But to the, to the question that you asked, what made me think or what made me do that? I started a prayer walk in Harlem after four homicides in a 30 day period. Hmm. And I saw the move of God where not a homicide happened for almost four years in the Bronx where we started for 10 years with Pastor Demos. There's not been a homicide in that neighborhood. So I said, what would it look like if I could go to Chicago? Now, I've want, I wanted to come to Chicago for six years with that idea. But, I, you know, people kind of feel like, well, this is my parade, and I don't want outsiders telling us how to do it. And how would that work? I didn't know anybody in Chicago. But at God's timing, that's when it all starts to make sense. And I'll say this until I go home. When good people do nothing, bad things happen. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Well, we are so glad you made it, and you're going to hang around with us. You're not going to walk straight back, are you? You're going to hang out here with us? Okay. Just... <laughs> I could. I no, no, no. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good. Can you offer a, a brief prayer for the city of Chicago? Amen. 
Amen. Most gracious Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, and we just ask your covering over this city, Father God. Lord, I pray for a revival to break out in your people, Father God, to people that declare that they are your people, Father God. Lord, that they would rise up for such a time as right now and take their rightful place, Father God. Lord, I pray for boldness in this community. Lord, I pray for boldness over the city, Father God. Lord, I pray for your hedges of protection over this city, Father God. Lord, the people that live in the suburbs, the people that live in, in Inglewood, the people that live on the the south side, the west side, would realize that unless we all prosper, no one is prosperous. Lord, I pray for safety over our young people, Father God. Lord, I pray for the unwed mothers, the single mothers, and those that have lost loved ones, thinking that this is the best that life offers. Lord, rise up and show your people yes. that you are still there, a God, and we are your people. And Father, that we would move as one in this community, Father God. Lord, that the world would know that there is a God. He lives and that Chicago is not going to be the butt of jokes but Lord turn it around for your glory Lord the people that are afraid give them boldness give them wisdom give them discernment and just let them follow you and they may not be popular but Lord let them know that your word says I'll never leave you nor forsake you in Jesus name we pray amen all right I want to get a teaching in how many y'all love the word anybody we got a wonderful teacher with us tonight. It's a good brother, good friend, loves the city. And uh, when you go to his church, you see the body of Christ represented. Help me to welcome at this time, Reverend Charles Lyons. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, in a city not any more or less broken or godless than our own. A huddle of believers heard these words read to them, written by the Apostle Paul in what we know as 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us. The word is to press in, to squeeze on every side so that you can't go right, you can't go left, you can only go forward. For the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, Therefore all died, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, God help us, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. A couple verses down. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Somebody say glory. And he has committed to us the word, the message of reconciliation or restoration. Does anybody know our city could use some reconciliation, some restoration? This is the gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the message that God has given us. Just the next line says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as through God we're making an appeal, as though God were making an appeal through us. It is the heart of God. It is the ministry of God. It is the desire of God that his message, one gospel, his good news flow to us so it can flow through 
us. Everybody say one gospel. one gospel. It's one gospel. Paul warned us in Galatians, don't go for another gospel. Don't go for a different gospel. Don't go for a distorted gospel. Brothers and sisters, it is still one gospel. Everybody say one gospel. There is only one revelation, and that is the Word of God. There is only one Savior. There is only one cross, and there was only one death on that cross. There is only one empty tomb. Everybody say one gospel. One gospel, saints. One gospel believed in many ages, carried to many places. One gospel spoken in many tongues. One gospel sung in many rhythms. One gospel. Whether you're on Cottage Grove or Magnificent Mile, somebody say one gospel. one gospel. Whether you are on Stony Island or Irving Park, everybody say one gospel. One gospel. Whether you are in a basement or a penthouse, one gospel. Whether you're in a condo or a coach house, whether you're in a six flat or a bungalow, it's whether you're on you're at Bloomingdale's or you're at Walmart, somebody say one gospel. Whether you're into a burrito or a hot dog, one gospel. A he burrito or 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 barbecue, one gospel. Whether you are with filet mignon or a turkey sandwich, it's still one gospel. My brothers and sisters, hipster or hustler, it's one gospel. Whether you're a professional or you are homeless, it is one gospel. And it is this gospel God has entrusted to us. We know it's the answer. We know it's the power of God. We know it makes the difference. Every one of us in this room is a witness. That one gospel was all it took to turn us from darkness to light, to turn us from hell to heaven. One gospel. One gospel. Come on, I want everyone to stand at this time. One gospel. Power of God to salvation. Let's pray that the gospel will prevail on the south side, on the west side, on the east side. The gospel would make a difference. We're not just praying that God would help people to put their guns down and they would be socially acceptable. We're praying that God would save them. They'd have a divine encounter with one gospel. Come on, won't you take some time right now and begin to pray inside your group. Somebody start, let them finish, then the next person start. Begin right now. Come on, let's pray. Pastor Matt Renault, will you come and lead us in prayer? Dear Father, we thank you this evening, and we look to you, the author of, of life. We look to you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus, we thank you for the cross this evening. We thank you for the power of the blood. We thank you for the forgiveness, Lord. And in this room tonight and across the airwaves, we declare that Jesus Christ reigns, that you are the King over all of the universe, that there is none like you.
There is none like you. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord, oh God. But Father, we thank you that the power of salvation is in the gospel. And tonight we pray that all over the city of Chicago, we pray for a sweeping move of the good news of Jesus. We pray that the lost would be found. We pray, God, that the broken would be made whole, that the sick would be healed, that those, God, who are in darkness would see a great light, oh God. Father, this is beyond us. This is beyond any man. This is beyond any institution. But this is not beyond you, oh God. This is not too big for you. You sent your son to redeem the lost, oh God. So God, we pray, but we don't pray doubting. We pray believing that the good news of Jesus is gonna sweep across this city and sweep across the suburbs, oh God. And we thank you for the one gospel that has saved the world and, and saved, has been has given to the world. And tonight, we look to you with hearts that are not doubting, but full of faith. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the things I'm grateful for is there's a story outside of the evil stories you've been hearing about of the murders, the mayhem, the, the shootings. Believe it or not, in the midst of all this darkness, there is light. There is light. And we want to show you something that I believe will strengthen your heart and encourage you. Check this out. What we hear in the media is not a report of God for Chicago. God said, this is a city I'm getting ready to bless. Wow, we're so excited to be outside bringing the power and the glory of God to the city of Chicago. We pray that you cover each child in this family. Notwithstanding that the fact that we face real challenges, God is yet alive in the city. Every time I go to a church, I see the promise of Chicago. Amen. And what I want to see is not on Sundays at 11. Yeah. I want to see it every other day, 24-7. Because once you do that, yeah. there's no space for the game banger. Yeah. Every day in the city of Chicago, people of faith and good conscience who love Jesus practice their faith in such profound ways in places and, and in ways that the media never covers. We take light and peace to, uh, and salt to the rotten place at the darkest time. We are the peacemakers. The police are the peacekeepers, but we make the peace. We're making peace happen on this corner. Down on 79th Street on the south side was a thing called On the Nines, Pastor John Hanna. At one point, they literally laid down in a long progression along the curb as a sign, ultimately, of lives that have been lost in our city. People see Chicago as this barren, Chirac-oriented war zone. But please know there are concerned parents, concerned pastors, concerned people that love this city, that love the people in the city, and hate the violence that's going on. I wish we would trumpet that a lot more. Today we'll have approximately anywhere between 14 to, to 18 different Latin American countries represented here. Today's event was one of glory, power. I believe God did something new to the city. Holy Father, let us cry out to you. Let us cry out to the atmosphere. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We need you to work in this community. We need you, God, to work in this city. God, we ask that for the fame of your name, not for any credit to any of our churches, denominations, or ministries. 
Lord, help us to love beyond measure when dealing with our brothers and our sisters. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. Yeah, there's some good in the hood. Right now, I want to bring up a dear friend. This brother leads an organization. It's phenomenal. It's called Legacy. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Help me to welcome at this time, Brian Dye. William Smith, age 24. And Jarvis Coleman, age 24. Demetrius Tolliver, age 23. Deshaun Thompson, age 20. Adrian Watson, age 28. Demetrius Pascal, age 19. Kendrick Thornton, age 22. These are just a few of the 13 names of people who've been killed in my neighborhood of West Garfield Park since January 1st. Individuals who were made in the image of God. Individuals who were children of somebody, were friends, were loved ones, taken due to violence. Psalms 55, 9 through 11 says, Destroy, O Lord, divide their tongues. For I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls. And iniquity and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. This is how I often feel as though our city is. Violence and strife everywhere iniquity and trouble within it, oppression and fraud do not depart from it. But it doesn't stop there. Verse 16 says, the author, the writer says, but I, but I call to God. But I call to God and the Lord will do what? Save. Will save. The Lord will save. I'll be the first to say we need more good police officers that we need police to care for our communities, but even if we had all the best police officers, they can't save us. I will be the first to say that we need better education, better schools, but even with the best teachers and the best schools and the best funding, they can't save us. I will be the first to say that we need employment opportunities on the west and south side of our city. But even with the best jobs, they can't save us. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. So cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. 465 murders in our city thus far this year. We need to cry out for the Lord to save us. And churches throughout this city this summer were gathered on some of our most violent corners praying for this. From Roseland to Rogers Park, from Austin to downtown, praying for peace to happen. I gathered with a group on the corner of Madison and Keeler in my neighborhood a few weeks ago, and there were three or four of us to gather, and we gathered and we started praying, and by the end there were 40 people gathered. One of the young men walked up to one of the individuals and handed a bag, and, afterward, and, 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 he, and he said, I, I need to turn my life over to Christ, and, and he was led to salvation. The Lord saved him. I was. I was a little curious, so I asked, well, what was in the bag that he turned in? There was a box of 20 shotgun shells that he was going to sell that night. 20 lives were saved because the Lord saves. Thanks, Brian. 
I want you to stand again. I want you to get in your groups. We're going to pray for a few minutes. We're going to believe God for some great and mighty things. We're praying for God's peace to overcome the violence for our children going back to school. They're back in school. Praying for civil leaders. Come on, will you just begin to pray? Begin again, one at, one at a time. We're seeking God and we're believing him to do great and mighty things. Come on, begin praying. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I want you to remain standing. I've got two warriors here with me right now. Brother Donovan Price and Andrew Holmes. You've seen them both on TV, gone into hot spots, have cared for people uh, lovingly, ran in a situation that most of us would have ran away from. And so I want you to help me to show them some love right now for all that they do. I'm out for murmuring, so excuse me if I do this a little different. Because there are six-year-olds that we've knelt with that have been shot and that have been killed. 71-year-old man to last night, watering his grass, was killed. It's time to cry out with one cry. Father God, in the name of Jesus, please cover us, Lord. Please cover us, Lord, with the peace that only you can give, God. God, we need you today. Rain down on us like never before. We need you, God. Father, people are dying in the streets. Let the blood that runs in the streets turn into the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, let us pray the way you want us to pray. If my people who are called by my name, Lord, let your people today pray. Let your people today pray. Heavenly Father, there's been too many mothers crying. Too many mothers crying. Too much blood. Father, we need you today. Heavenly Father, we need you if we ever needed you before. We sure do need you right now, Lord. Heavenly Father, time out for playing Christian. Time out for playing Christian. Time out for being secretive Christians. Let the redeemed of God say so. We need you today, Lord. We need one cry, one cry, one cry. Chicago is for God. Chicago is for God. Chicago is for God. We love you. We need you. We know that we can because you can. We know that we can because you can. We love you. Love you, God. And we love each other, Heavenly Father. Help us to love more, to pray more, to cry more, to touch more, to love more. Help us to be more like you, Lord. And we'll be careful to make sure that in all we do, God, everywhere we go, that God might be glorified, the Spirit might be edified, and Satan might be horrified. In Jesus' name, amen.
I want everyone to stand at this time. Next to me is a young man that's been out on the street serving Christ. Uh, I know him from the south side of Chicago, the Chicago, the Agape Center, doing great work uh, involved with Crew. Some of you guys have heard of Crew and great work there. And so uh, Mark Hinkle is a dear man of God, and he's going to lead us in prayer. And so as he prays, I want you to pray. Uh, we're crying out to God. I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired of this violence, aren't you? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and yet I want to prevail and believe God to do great and mighty things. And so we want you to come and, and lead us, and we're praying right along with you, Mark. God bless you. Good prayer, brothers and sisters. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, and we intercede and stand in the gap for each one of our 77 communities. Father, we pray that you would pour out your spirit like never before on our city. We desperately need you, O oh God. We just talked about a God who can do miracles. God, we ask that you would do signs and miracles and wonders in each one of our communities in such a way that only you would get the glory. God, pour out your spirit, we pray. And Father God, we know that the crime and all the violence that's happening in our city is because of the, principal the principalities and the powers and the dark places. So, Father, we pray that you would unleash a legion of your angels into every community and smash down the strongholds in the mighty name of Jesus. And then, Father, we pray that you'd raise up mighty warriors, mighty prayer warriors to stand in the gap in each one of these communities. God, we believe in you, God. We believe that you can do these mighty and great things. Only you can do it, and we pray, God, that you would do it in such a way that only you would get the glory. And we pray all this in the mighty and matchless name of our wonderful Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, thanks, Mark. Absolutely beautiful. Hey, you're involved in Pray Chicago. We're seeking God for the welfare of the city. Uh, we believe God to do great and mighty things. You can be involved, not only by praying here at Moody Bible Institute, but I know there are thousands of people who are praying with us via 90.1 FM WMBI. Also, you can uh, join with us at Facebook, uh, Pray Chicago Facebook. Also, we're on Twitter, at Pray Chicago, and hashtag Pray Chicago, and PrayChicago.us. That's who we are, Pray Chicago, because we're praying for what city? Chicago. Amen. It just makes sense, doesn't it? The mantra that I've got is this, uh, we're coming together because the city is falling apart. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek his face, he'll, he'll hear from heaven, he'll forgive the sin. There have been some praying people all around and Doc was acknowledging them a minute ago and I'm gonna ask these ministry leaders if you'll come at this time, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, if you come at this time, you've been praying on the, the streets, you're involved in a variety of ministries, you're connected to Pray Chicago, would you come and stand with me right now? Would you come and stand with me right now? Come on. Come on with me right now, please. Amen. Everyone that can, come on up. Ask Doc if he'll come up, Doc Feuder. Hallelujah. God has used these people and many of you to make an impact on the city, and we're so, so grateful. Doc, speak to us. Also represented here are many of these that have hosted previous Pray Chicago's. We've actually done, this is number nine, and many of these that you see have been host pastors, leaders. I also want to acknowledge, where's the Pray Naperville folks? Is Susan here? You guys need to come up here as well. Come on up, y'all. Is Pray Fox Valley, Pray South Holland, any of y'all that are here, I want you to come stand because uh, God is unleashing uh, a, a stirring of unity and oneness in ways that are just beautiful. You know, there's much drama, we know this. Uh, today, in the headlines of the Trib, we just surpassed more killings already this year than all of last year put together. But, but, the good news is that God is drawing us together. He's making us one. 
and that he is knitting our hearts in beautiful ways. What I'd like all of you to do is stand as well right now. And could each of you that are here behind me lock arms or hold hands or however you want to do it? And I would like all of the auditorium as well to do this. Hold hands, lock arms, hug however it is. We want to, we want to show that we're the church. We're the body of Christ. We're family. We are one. We are becoming the answer to Jesus' prayer in John 17. And I'm going to read these verses right now. Look around you. This is black, brown, yellow, white. Men, women, young people, the church in Chicago, on the move overcoming darkness with light salty people amen so i want to thank you all for being a part of this tonight and listen as i read again familiar verses out of john 17 jesus's prayer to his father as thou didst send me into the world i've also sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they themselves also made me sanctified in truth i do not ask in behalf of these alone but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. Even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst sent me, and the glory which thou hast given me I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfected in unity, that the world may know that thou didst send me and didst love them, even as thou didst love me. Amen? Roy, you got a song in you for us right now? Something that can knit us together as one in Christ? And I'm going I'm to grab hands with somebody. Well, amen, amen. Wow. <laughs> I'm just looking around. This is beautiful. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. somebody that's near you real quick. Let them know I love you. I thank God for you. A lot of love in this room. A lot of love in this room. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in God's sight. A lot of love. I believe when we stand together, the enemy is defeated. Amen, somebody? So let's pray that strongholds will be broken, unity will prevail, and we'll all fall under the banner of Jesus Christ. Come on, I want you to pray in your huddles right now. Let's take a few minutes to do that.
Marcinia Richards, fierce women of faith, come and lead us in prayer. God be the glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the power that is in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we are not intimidated by the reports because your word says, whose report will we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. And so, Father, tonight we declare that you are Lord over this city. We declare that we are one in the Lord in this city, Father. We thank you, Father, that even now that you will raise us up and that you will raise up journalists across this city to show what is being done by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that even now, that unity is being seen, that even tonight, Father, that unity is being seen. And as such, Father, we declare that unity is across the east, the west, the north, and the south of this city. That pastors are coming together, that evangelists are coming together, that missionaries are coming together, that youth pastors are coming together. White, black, oh God, Hispanic, Latinos, and Asians, God, we're coming together in the name of Jesus, and that the power and the Lord will be seen in this city. We give you glory in advance for what you're about to do, and we shall hope. Hey, standing next to me is a dear friend, Luis Amador. We call him Paco. He's one of the pastors of the New Life Churches, and he's going to talk to us about commissioning. Share with us, bro. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority. What would the king do with all his authority? He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the, to the very end of the age. Uh, in a couple of days, we're going to be remembering 15 years since the Twin Towers, 9-11, New York City. When the towers began to fall, everybody ran. And they were right to run away from wreckage and destruction. But there was one group of people who did not run. In fact, they ran, they did not run away, they ran towards the wreckage. They ran towards the towers, they ran towards the pain. Some of them ran towards their death. The reason why they ran towards it was because they had a very specific calling. They had a uniform, they had a pledge, they had been given a commission, and so instead of running away, they ran towards the places and, and point of need. And the Ephesians chapter three, uh, the apostle Paul tells us that it was Jesus' intent that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to all the rulers and authorities and principalities in the heavenly realms. So as a church, we've prayed already, we prayed, and it's been too short, but it's a good thing to gather together. We prayed for one gospel. That's what makes us a family. It's a cross that brings us all together. It's the beauty of the cross. God himself dying on behalf of us. But then we also gathered together and we prayed one cry, one cry saying, oh God, give us one single passion that your name would be glorified in the city. Yeah. And now we have just finished praying for the church. The church, I would like to uh, do two things. Um, instead of talking more, I would like to pray for you a commissioning. Oh Lord Jesus, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth. And you have sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere in this city may seek after you and find you. Bring all the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And this is a prayer of St. Francis. If you want to close your eyes with me, O oh Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, may we so love. Where there is injury, may we be the people who saw pardon. Where there is doubt, may we be the people who sow faith. Where there is despair, may we be a people who sow hope. Where there is darkness, may we be the people who sow light. Where there is sadness, may we be the people who sow joy. Oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much be people who seek to be consoled as people to console others. And we would not be seeking to be understood, but that we would seek to understand, that we would not be people who seek to be loved, but to be people who love with everything in their lives. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And why, why? Because Christ has died, because Christ is risen, and because Christ is coming again. Thank you, Pastor Paco. Hey, will you stand with me again? We're going to break up into our groups. And let's pray that the church will be the church. Come on, break up in your groups right now, will you? My brother Vance Henry, he is deputy chief to the mayor's office, and uh, this brother loves God, loves the city. He's a preacher, and uh, I thank God for him. And if you don't mind, come on, let's show him some love for what he's doing in a very difficult spot. Love you, bro. Let's pray tonight. Let's pray tonight. Our God of ages past, hope for days to come. You've been for so many of us a shelter in a stormy blast. You are our eternal home. Father, we thank you tonight for Jesus. We thank you tonight for 
for grace and for mercy. Father, we bless and magnify that wonderful name. All over this room, we confess tonight that there is no other name given among men under heaven by which they might be saved. And so to that great name tonight, we say hallelujah. hallelujah. We bless you tonight. You're a great big old God and you love us so greatly. Father, we pray tonight that you would strengthen our hands for the work ahead of us. Stay the hand of the evil one in the name of Jesus. Father, all over this room, we ask God that the power of your Holy Spirit would, would fall on us like the day of Pentecost. That, that in this city, God, we would lift up your name with power. For we know that in your name there is power. You can shut down drugs on blocks. So strengthen our hands tonight for the work. Oh God, we pray tonight as one body that you would in this city heal those who are broken. Heal tonight, set free, and deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, Grandmama was right when she said that we didn't have anybody but you. But you're all that we need against this world. And so strengthen us tonight. Strengthen us, God, to lift up your name. And we'd be ever so careful to give you the praise. We bless you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. We need not leave this place discouraged, despondent, without hope. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. He's on that throne. We want to bring this to him as we close tonight. So let's bow together. Father, nothing is too difficult for you. We've described all the problems that we're facing in our city, the solutions that haven't worked. It's way, way beyond us. But nothing is too difficult for you. So we rest in that. We take hope in that. Now to the one who's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ever ask or think. To you be the glory, now and forever. Amen.